Oh, yes. Okay, so you can tell them about the fire, you can tell them about the school, how old it is. So, you know, I found out that uh, uh, Huruma Girls is my age, 56 oh. years. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can. You ready? Yes, I am. At least I would not waste in the time. Which is camera one? Okay, you just this one. I concentrate on this one. Yeah. And you are ready, you tell me. Okay, you uh, go. My name is Irungo Ndoti. I'm uh, the current principal of the Highway Secondary School. And on Sunday, the 27th, we had uh, an unfortunate incident where a fire broke out in one of our dormitories when uh, the students were in class. We did not have any casualties in terms of uh, people. But uh, the students, the form four, form three going to form four, uh, lost their personal properties and uh, their mattresses and the beds were also destroyed. And so we are happy today to welcome our uh, representative, women rep, and that is uh, the county of Nairobi, uh, who has come to assist these youngsters so that we can be able to continue the students. The students are very calm and uh, they are in class and we continue with our programs very well. And uh, we are doing the investigations, we are not speculating, we have uh, handed over the investigations to the investigative agencies. We are almost certain that the students were not involved, but uh, the investigations will tell us what uh, exactly happened. So Highway Secondary School is a school that was started in uh, 1961 and uh, it has been doing very well over the years. It was a day school up to the year 2012 and uh, now it is fully boarded. And we are happy that uh, uh, the students are continuing to improve. Last year they recorded a good improvement uh, from a mean of 5.3 to 5.8, and we expect to improve even further as we go along. So we are happy to welcome uh, our mom to come and uh, assist the youngsters, and we are very happy with the work that she's doing. Thank you. Very very much. Much. How many students were affected by it? Yeah. The dome that uh, was uh, raised down was housed in 158 students and those were the ones that were affected by the fire. But he made arrangements, alternative arrangements, of where they can sleep even as we wait to do the necessary and also as we prepare for the four months that are coming in a month's time. Maybe what's the population of the school at the moment? The current population without the four months is uh, 730. We expect when the four months are here to be 1,050. So that's the number that we are supposed to be. But now we have about 730 students. And how are you prepared now for the Form 1 who are coming? Maybe we do have enough space for them? Uh, with uh, the, the incident that we have, uh, we will have a challenge in getting the Form 1s. But we are working round the clock together with the Board of Management to see that we are ready for the Form 1s uh, in whatever way we can. But in terms of dormitory facilities, we are completely overstretched and we condemn in the strongest terms possible, the person who could have caused uh, that uh, fire incident, because that's a very big disservice to the children of Kenya, the boy child, who would have had the opportunity to train. We have wanted to expand the capacity, but now we cannot because of uh, that incident that happened. But we are making every arrangement to be ready. For the Maybe how many from one are you expecting now? We we have uh, been given 300 for months. We expect that number to come. If they come, we will be good. But then we may not be able to take many more because of the space of the dormitories. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe the chair of the board? Yes. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Moria. I represent the board of management of highway secondary. Uh, as a board, our work is very specific. We are the custodians of the properties and the, and the institution. So we are here and we are thankful to those people that, have, uh, that are here with us. Mostly is to make sure that we have as little uh, as possible in terms of disrupt, uh, disruption. The academic programs to continue. The kids have provisions. And we, we continue with our school programs as much as possible. This afternoon, I'm happy uh, the, the Nairobi Women Rep, uh, Esther Pasaris, is here with us, among other stakeholders that have come around to help us to try to normalize the situation. We are happy and we thank God that we didn't have fatalities, as we have been told by the principal. 
the young ones or our students we are in class so we thank God for that uh, for, for, for that but we are we are also appealing to anyone else who would like to come and join us and join other uh, well-wishers to help us normalize the situation as much as possible because our kids need an environment they can study they need provisions and they also need to know that they are secured. I also want to say that in terms of what is going on, we have let the investigators, the government arms, to take up the investigation and continue, so we cannot comment on that. However, we are getting support from the government uh, in Nairobi, uh, Nairobi County and national government, more so the Minister of Education, but more so I want to thank this afternoon the Nairobi Human Rep. When we got a call from us, she, she came immediately and even today she's here again just to, uh, just to make sure that she, she's joining with us. And I'm happy to say the board appreciates your presence. These kids will never forgot that we are the first among the first responders. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, hey, so. Um, yes, first of all, I want to yes, say yes, thank you. Oh. I think it's important to recognize uh, Mr. Dotti, can you come? I think it's important to recognize you being, you know, I'm so proud of the solidarity that you have with all the schools that are here. Yes. You know, you've got uh, Huruma Girls, you've got Buruburu and Moi Forces at Kadibi that are, have come, the, have, the principals have come here uh, to, to actually stand with the, the school, but also I think to learn because it is these exchanges that enable you to learn. And I think you're all facing the same challenges. Yes. So I think it would be a disservice not to have them also talk because uh, fires are becoming a norm in boarding schools. In discipline is becoming also a norm. Uh, and I think uh, there's a lot of frustration. But we, we, we really need to get the parents to also talk to their students. So I wouldn't want to just start speaking because I think it's important because I'm also on live TV mm -hmm. for you to introduce and we give each of the principals uh, an opportunity to talk because I know they're all going through challenges as well. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud of each and every one of you for actually being here. And then of course we have to also, uh, you know, Mayor, Mayor Joa Ketch uh, was, the, was the, <laughs> the first person called when the fire started and he was, thank God, awake and he managed to get the uh, Nairobi Fire Department to come and uh, respond. And they put off the fire in two hours and you know that saved the other three structures so we also want to thank him so i think it's important that maybe we introduce each and every one of them and they come in and they and they give some words uh, thank you very much we are honored today to have uh, my colleagues uh, come and stand in solidarity with us they are my colleagues in this profession and i uh, would want to welcome so that you can see them the principal of uh, burburu girls to come and say hi madam Caro, please uh, come thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here, though on a sad note, uh, to sympathize or to condole with our colleague, Mr. Irungu, and the highway fraternity. Yeah, we share a lot and uh, we feel it when one of us has an issue. And uh, we come together at least so that uh, we can help in any way that we can. Therefore, this incident, I must say, it is bad that we condemn it in the strongest terms possible because it is coming at a time when we need these facilities so much. This is the time where we are waiting to admit the form ones and all schools are overstretched. So when we hear that uh, a dormitory has been brought down through a fire, we really feel it because we know it is going to affect a number of Kenyan children and more so the boy child who really needs to be taken care of. Therefore, it is our wish that uh, this problem is going to be solved as fast as possible and they will have as many people as possible to come and assist with materials and uh, even with financing so that the dorm can come back and uh, be rebuilt. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. That is uh, Madam Caro of Burburu Girls. We also have the principal of Ruma Girls, Madam Grace. Madam Grace, please come. Thank you. Good afternoon all. <laughs> My name is Grace Natalia, principal of Ruma Girls. We are here this afternoon to encourage our brother, Mr. Irongo, for this very ugly incident that happened. We want to encourage him because those of us that have had an experience of this nature, such an incident in school is the worst nightmare for a teacher. 
and it has come at a very, very hard time when all of us are preparing to receive the Form 1s with a very, very bad challenge of infrastructure, especially the dormitory. So we thank our mom, Mama County, for this hand because mothers feel for the children. So we, want, we really want to appreciate her this afternoon for the hand that he has, she has given to these boys because it encourages them and it shows that people care. We know this is an incident of just one person, maximum of two, that is causing all this, but we want to condemn it with the strongest words possible and say that the investigating agents may do their work so that this may be a learning lesson to this school and others. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Madam Grace. Uh, together with us, we also have the principal of the Moy Forces Academy, Mr. Maina, who has come to uh, console us. Karibu, Mr. Maina. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is uh, Maina, the principal of Moy Forces Academy. Uh, we are here uh, to support and uh, see Pole to our colleague and also the family and the fraternity of Highway Secondary School for the unfortunate uh, uh, event that has happened. We want to say that it is so bad uh, when we are experiencing a, a destruction of infrastructures within our schools. That is very, very bad. It's unfortunate and uncalled for. We want to, to say that as colleague principals, we don't support any form of indiscipline uh, because, as you are aware, uh, this is a sort of indiscipline among some quarters, which is very, very bad. And we want to say that we want to encourage uh, good discipline from all quarters. Uh, we know discipline is variance. It is among the students, among the peer in friends, also from outside. And we want to say that good discipline we will bring out good performance and we, we don't want to encourage and see destructions of properties as a result of uh, indiscipline. So whoever was involved, it is not good because it's affecting the lives of other uh, boys and we are here to say that uh, we, we, we are in support that whoever did this uh, know that he has affected the lives of uh, very innocent boys who are here in this school and the, as colleagues we support our, our colleague Mr. Duarte we are with you uh, uh, we don't want you feel as if uh, you are out of place so that you lose the other management uh, 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 skills continue to lead this school and we know you are capable uh, you are doing it well we we'll continue and God is with us so thanks so much and uh, may God also bless uh, the fraternity of Nalobi County, the, the, the woman left, Mr. Pasari, and the team that is here for, for the, the vision that they have and the coming in to support this uh, this cause. As I tell you, God bless you. So thank you. I know the, the students are eager to hear Mama County. And we are, uh, they'll be waiting to hear Mama County. But uh, I see the ACC is here. Uh, but before the ACC, you uh, uh, can see you can break this paper. Well, once my chairman has spoken, I think uh, we've all said everything. Mine is just to say thank you very much to Mama Yetu, because when we called her, she immediately came to provide the normal services that she normally does from the bottom of her heart. And we really want to thank you. And on behalf of the parents who we have also been talking to, uh, definitely we are going to relay the appreciation uh, on your behalf to these mothers uh, and, the, and the parents. So mine is just to say thank you very much to the principal of our school here. He has done a lot of good work and um, the board has also done extremely well. We, we, we have a lot of good working relationship and whatever is happening, 
think it's only fair that um, a teamwork must be there. The part of the investigation, definitely we're leaving it to the government's arm to continue with the investigation. But mine is just to say thank you for the support that um, we've been given by my mom. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Mike Dewey, Assistant Grand Commissioner Salabi. After this a great day, we are happy the out of the day from the lobby to the commissaries and we able to bring some assistance to this school. As we know, we had an issue of odometry that actually got bad. Uh, on the security aspect, we are looking at all possibilities so that whoever may be made up cost, the burning of that geometry is apprehended because that is a criminal act and we don't want security and safety of our students to get any, to post any security to anybody within this particular environment. So we are making our patrols both day and night to ensure that the students and the, and the teachers and even the non-teaching staff are all secure so that this environment is good and conducive for that. Otherwise, thank you and I wish you a good Highway Secondary for what they have gone through, but I also want to commend them for being able to get the response uh, as quickly as possible. We are, we are actually very blessed to know that the students were not in the dorms, but I want to talk to the parents, the parents of these students. You know that during the pandemic, parents, when you had your children at home, you saw what happened to your children at home, okay? Some actually got lost on the wayside. Boarding schools are a good place. I send both my children to boarding school and they get a lot of discipline in boarding schools. But I think we, we have a failure in that when we send our children to boarding schools, we don't make them understand the importance of protecting the property of the school. Now, all those students who lost their items, 
each student, a parent has invested over 20,000 shillings to kit the student in terms of books, in terms of uh, bags, in terms of shoes, socks, sweaters, trousers, tie, shirt. Now everything has been gutted, gutted down. Mattresses, blankets, you know. So, the stu you know, I know that the school actually had some students with discipline issues. And we've seen that one of the f fences at the far end has a hole. So we are also thinking that this could have been an outside job, a student that is disgruntled that did this, right? But we know, I think if we actually do some investigation, we might be able to find out exactly who did this. But the students, parents have to tell their children that arson is criminal. If you're caught having committed arson, you go to jail. You don't want to end as a child in juvenile court and in juvenile uh, 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 sentence. So we have to actually educate our children because this cost the government cannot afford. As it is, we're already struggling with dormitories for all our schools. We have schools that have been sent students 200 over the amount of dormitory facilities that they have. So discipline is not just the teachers, it is also the parents. Parents have a big role to play. You, and you know, we need boarding schools because parents are working. Life has become so expensive, both parents are working. You don't want your child to be, you want your child to be in boarding school. And as the government tries to give boarding schools, if we continue burning these schools because our parents are not talking to their students, then what is going to happen is that government might reach a point where it says, we need to ban boarding schools. Where will we go? You know, so I feel that parents have a role to play. I also feel that government needs to really seriously look at the Psychology and Counselors Act being implemented. You know, I had actually got, brought this to the attention of the Ministry of Health, that the Psychology and Counselors Act was approved in 2014. They have yet to put a board together. And I shall be taking it up again with PS uh, Susan Mochache and uh, uh, Mutai Kagwe. Because once we have the Psychology and Counselors Act, and we have a policy on counselling, we will then be able to ensure that when we have disciplinary issues, we don't send the children away. We actually have them counseled in-house. My children were abroad in boarding school, okay? At the end of the day, when they had discipline issues, they were not sent back home. And it's not because of the distance, it's because the school has a mechanism to provide counseling. Children go through a lot. Some of them are even abused at home. So we need to have a situation where we provide counselors. And counselors cannot be the teachers. Teachers are supposed to teach subjects, which they are specialized in. They are not experts when it comes to counseling. There is a school in Nairobi, which I shall be visiting in the next few days, which sent 30 children home on the accusation that those children were practicing lesbianism. Now that boarding school calls the parents of all these students. I like the manner in which it was done. Each student did not, each parent did not know which other student was in that manner. They called them, they said, come back to, come to school and pick your child. Now you, you understand one thing, that this child who has been told to go home, who the school is saying is practicing lesbianism, right? The mother has struggled, the parents have struggled to get the school fees. We're having exams in the next two weeks. Those children have been sent home for three weeks. Those three weeks, the children are going to miss their studies. The children are going to miss their exams. And the parents have got to find the money for counseling, which the minimum counseling would be a thousand shillings. So if the government had a mechanism to provide counseling, then the counselors would have been in the school and talked to these students. And you cannot accuse a child who is giving a biscuit in her mouth to another girl, a biscuit, and they're biting it and they're having fun to see who will drop the biscuit. You cannot tell these students that they're lesbians. I also feel that the school should have actually made sure that if they're having such a crisis, they put cameras in the dorms so that they can monitor. But to send these children home and to brand them is psychologically also not right. Because, you know, the, uh, my maid sends me a message and tells me my daughter has been accused of being lesbian. I mean, you're not lesbian because you kiss a girl. If you're a girl, you're not, you know, if these are children, they experiment, these are things that they do. So I feel that that particular school, which is in Nairobi, that did that, right, should also be investigated because you don't suspend 30 children. I know we have a crisis of homosexuality in some of the schools, we have a crisis in lesbianism in some of the schools, but what we need is counseling. We need counseling so that the children can be guided properly on what is right and what is wrong, all right? So the principles that I'm saying, all these things, 
need to actually ask for counseling. And there are counselors who will be available because they're they are, they are in their internship to come in and actually counsel the students. So I think uh, suspending them was wrong. So while we're here today, um, we're going to be presenting some matrices. I've put a proposal to GAF because the school sent us a list which requires about over 3 million shillings. They need the 200 beds. They need, uh, they need 100 beds, 200 mattresses, 200 blankets, 200 pillows. They need uh, 200 students to be kitted with the uh, basic uniform. Uh, and all these things cost money. They need paint for the classroom. They need a glass for the windows. They need grills to be repaired. And of course, the money they have is very little. So as GAF, we've put in a proposal. But today, thanks to Nakuru Blankets, we are able to get 100 uh, blankets as a donation. Thanks to Vitaform, we were able to get 50 mattresses as a donation. Times are hard, even private sector is suffering. But we thank Nakuru Blankets and we thank Vitaform for their continued support of uh, incidences in Nairobi where we require this. I've written a few letters to a few people and I'm looking for donations so that we can actually do the best that we can. The MP for the area is in, currently in hospital. But when he comes out, we will talk about CDF. I'm glad to announce that Treasury has released over 4 billion to CDF. So the MP needs to look at securing the perimeter walls so that uh, we don't have people coming from the outside because today it's us and tomorrow it could be rape. And uh, we are also looking at um, a private sector chipping in and helping out. I also bring you greetings from uh, the acting uh, governor of Nairobi. She was involved in, uh, in, uh, in a, a council of governors meeting, so she was not able to come, but she says that she would visit the school and see what else she can do. Uh, so together, we come together as a government to help out. So for those of you who are always saying, what is government doing for the people? These are one of the in interventions. So through NGAF, hopefully the board will meet today, they'll give us an approval, we'll see. Another big problem we have in GAF is that the money for disasters is so little. Nairobi gets a million shillings a year for disaster. That manages, it doesn't even cater for one disaster. So we need to actually have a disaster fund, especially for uh, counties that have calamities like fire in Nairobi, flooding in other areas, drought in other areas, uh, uh, cattle rustling in other areas. So we need to ensure that disaster fund is, is big and, uh, in, and the amount is large. I mean, one million for Nairobi is too little. So we do have challenges, budgets are limited, but all in all, uh, we thank the board of the school, we thank the parents, the old school, you know, the old school students yes. need to be also put, you know, the old boys yes. need to also be called in. You know, when you've studied through here and you've got your education and now you're a lawyer or you're an accountant or you're a businessman, remember your old school. Come back and see what you can do to your old school because this is the future generation and we have to nurture them just like you were nurtured. So I want to say thank you to the Fourth Estate for also being here to cover the school. We will talk to the students. We're going to give some bursaries to the most needy students. Now, when we give bursaries to the most needy students, of course, the parents will save 10,000 shillings each, but the school will receive 200,000, which might help to help to uh, to deal with the, uh, the problem that they've had right now and any other problem that they have. But uh, from 1961, I think uh, you're doing well. We, we are hoping, you know, we were hoping that the BBI, and we hope that the BBI will get back on track, because the BBI will give the MPs uh, will give the MPs double the CDF they're getting right now. They were getting 100 million, they will be able to get 200 million. So with 200 million, they'll be able to build more schools, give more bursaries, and also build more police stations. So, uh, you know, for those who don't support the BBI, when you're thinking that you're supporting the hustler nation, the hustlers, for them to be supported, they need to access education, because education is power. All right? And how will they access education if we don't have sufficient amount of money? I know that people are saying that right now we have no money. All countries right now have no money because they've been dealing with the pandemic. But the money will come. Kenya is a very stable economy. If we can sort out the differences that we have every time we have an election, we will be able to attract investors. Our president is currently in, in France. He's working very, very hard to try and bring resources to this country and investors to this country. And the only way to do that is to have peaceful elections. Because if you want an investor to come and put a billion shilling or two billion shilling investment in this country, he's not going to come if he knows in five years there will be skirmishes, there will be uh, post-election violence. So we, we need to think twice about being told that you're being protected by the hustler movement, when in essence, 
it's actually going to deter you from achieving your objectives. You know, a bird in hand is worth two in bush, in the bush. So right now, forget the promises that you're being made. And I really sincerely hope that uh, Kiambao will vote wisely, not vote because there is a wave, because this is your government, you elected it. And our president is working very, very hard to ensure that this country goes ahead. We are the symbol of Africa. We're actually almost catching up with South Africa. Look at the express highway. Look at the train. You know, we, all this is going to help this country stabilize. So I want to appeal to Kenyans, don't go with the wave, because the wave can take you to a place. You know what tsunamis can also do? They can also be destructive. Go with what is right. This government is trying, considering we are coming from a pandemic. Right? Even presidents from neighboring countries are coming to Kenya to get medical. Why? Because we are stable. Because we are ahead. Because the president has a vision for universal health care. So can we put our minds to work? I remember the president saying somewhere, if all of us made our own little contribution to making Kenya a better place, we would go very far. So I want to thank the media. Let's hope that the mattresses come quickly and then we can meet with the boys. Thank you. Yeah, to nabai tibo. Hey, come here. Yes, you need to cut the story.